So Robinhood just added four additional hours of extended hours trading for their clients. In this video, I wanna talk about why this is actually really big news, what this means for the downstream effects, some of the details of the extended hours trading, like how do the orders go through and how's that stuff kind of work, uh, and then really kind of how it's gonna play into volume, and also how Robinhood's doing right now off of this news, because the stock's actually up quite a bit. So this came out Tuesday on March 29th. And so they're saying that Robin is now providing trading from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern going forward. In the past, here's the biggest problem that I hated Robinhood for in terms of if you got into small caps or you wanted to trade individual stocks, you want to trade your shares, not options. I hated Robinhood for this reason because they offered trading 30 minutes before the bell. So 9.30 a.m. Eastern, the market opens, right? So you can only trade on Robinhood from 9 a.m. Eastern until 9.30 in pre-market. And then once the market closed at 4 p.m., you can only trade from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern. I mean, to be honest, it's like, okay, cool. It's, it's better than nothing, but it's like, okay, it's not really that useful. And at the end of the day, if something crazy happens in the morning for pre-market, there's news, there's this, there's that, you can't do anything until 9 a.m., which by that point, the move's already been made. The reasoning why is this quote right here, okay? They say that their customers, our customers often tell us they're working or are preoccupied during regular market hours, limiting their ability to invest on their own schedule or evaluate and react to important market news, okay? Which makes sense, and as people go back to work and we kind of get out of the pandemic and COVID Robinhood market, what's really happening here, guys? What's, what's really happening here is Robinhood's getting, you know, they're seeing less and less users, right? They're seeing people who are like, well, if I'm at work, you know, I'm less likely to use this platform. I'll use a Webull, I'll use a TD Ameritrade, I'll use a Fidelity, and I'll do what I'm going to do on those platforms that offer potentially longer hours, more extended hours trading, especially Webull these days, which you can go from 4 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m., so full extended hours access, um, which you can't beat that. And Rob, but it still isn't quite there, okay? So 7 a.m. is a good start. Uh, a lot of other platforms come online at 7 a.m., but technically speaking, 4 a.m. Eastern is when officially pre-market starts. Um, so they're, they are missing out on a couple hours there uh, from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. So that, you know, a couple hour span. Um, where there could be some news. Generally speaking, 7 a.m. Eastern, you see a lot more news start flowing through, but there could be some stuff and obviously overnight gaps. And, you know, if there's news across the world, other markets and whatnot, we know that happen when our markets are closed, you know, then technically speaking, you know, 4 a.m., you'll see the gap ups, the gap downs, those movements will occur there. So you know, you still miss out on a little bit of that chunk of time. But the reality is they're hurting. They're seeing less users. They're seeing less need for the platform. And when there's less users on their platform, what does that mean? Robinhood makes less money. And so they got to have, and this is something that honestly, I thought that they would have done a long time ago. But as of right now, this is something that they are now starting to roll out. And I think it's going to be a really good thing ultimately for people who use their platform and just for volume and the markets in general, because there are a lot of people who still believe that this is one of the easiest platforms to use, or it is, it really is, uh, in terms of ease of use, simplicity, and all that stuff, and that are not going to jump to a Webull or to a TD Ameritrade or to whatever other brokerage platform there is that they have in front of them, because Robinhood's just that much easier to use. If I want to go buy a share of stock, I want to go buy Apple, I want to go buy this stock, I want to buy that stock. I can just go do it and swipe up and the order is in and I can sell, I can buy. It's so simple. Now, as you progress in your trading and investing, you kind of realize that there are other features you might want access to. You realize that, you know, limit orders, you realize you kind of want to see things like level two, you want to see time and sales. There are other things other platforms have, but that's if you're more active in your trading. So even though as a long-term investor, like right, something happens, there's earnings reports, there's this, there's that in the morning, you know, now you can take advantage of, you know, getting in on the action of that, you know, pre-market or after hours. But as we speak, look at this chart. Now, obviously I, I'm filming this video a little bit earlier in the day, so we'll see where this ends up progressing and developing. But as I speak, Robinhood just hit a new high. Robinhood opened up the day well under, well under $15, and now it's up over $3.50, to 1637 now it just hit a new high as we speak it's up 27 percent this stock is squeezing shorts and it is continuing to push higher and higher and higher as we speak and as i'm filming this video right now so it seems like the stock is doing quite well off this news now i like the news i think it's great news for the company i think it's great news for Robinhood. we will see how this impacts in future earnings how this impacts their users and stuff um, but at the end of the day the way you're going to see more users on the platform is crypto is ripping, which we're seeing crypto making some bigger moves. So crypto ripping, stocks ripping, 
and just you want that attention and you want that hype. You want the meme stocks popping off. You want some short squeezes popping off. And we're getting some of that. Now, not to the degree we got in 2020, 2021, but we're kind of getting up there in terms of some crazy moves. I mean, we had some big moves on AMC, GameStop, but they got hammered pretty quickly after the open. But I mean, Robinhood is now kind of taking the place of the meme stocks and it's starting to push up. So, you know, here's the bigger picture chart for Robinhood. I mean, it's finally breaking out over the 50 SMA, making a nice move to the upside. I can see Robinhood pushing up into that 18 to $20 range. We'll see, it might even hit there before you even watch the video, but I can see that range as a, as a legitimate target for Robinhood right now. And then we'll see if this continues, momentum keeps flowing in, all of that stuff. But now I wanna talk about the, the reality of this and why I think this is actually really, really important. So now when you get after hours movers, when you get pre-market movers, when you get that volume, when you get those news releases, when you get these penny stocks, that these biotech companies that drop news, at let's say, you know, a 7 a.m. or an 8 a.m. Eastern time, and it's positive phase two, it's positive this, it's positive that, it's FDA approval news. This news now will be able to you know, see some more volume because there are now going to be a lot more people who have Robinhood, who use Robinhood, who are going to now slap on some of these stocks, slap the ass, right, as we say, and buy in and chase. And what is that going to do? It's going to allow for more parabolic moves. It's going to allow for more volume. It's going to allow for more emotions, more chasing, more panic selling. So it's going to allow for bigger moves. And what does it do? It allows you to play off emotions. It allows you to play off technical analysis. It allows you to play off all the things we've been playing off of, but now it provides some more volume in the pre-market sessions when generally speaking, there is less volume traded, but now it could provide some more volume. I don't think it's going to be a massive, massive change that, oh my gosh, now every single stock that has some news in the pre-market is going to go crazy. Absolutely not. But it could be a nice boost to a lot of stocks and to some momentum that you're going to see across different sectors, across stocks in pre-market, after hours, and all that good stuff. So it's definitely something that I'm excited to see how this continues to roll out, how this plays out going forward, but let's talk about some of the stats. So in terms of their extended hours trading, so they've now allowed you to trade an additional two and a half hours in pre-market and an additional two hours in the aftermarket. Uh, so that's great. Some things to note, not all stocks will be eligible for fractional shares trading during the extended hour sessions. So just make sure you understand that. Also, when it comes down to market orders, okay, if you put in a market order, okay, they will automatically convert those to a limit order with a price 5% away from the last trade price at the time that you entered the order, okay? So to avoid having any slippage, any of that stuff, just do a limit order, please. Just put in a limit order, please, please. Uh, so just make sure you choose a limit order when you're going through the trade process and you set it as a limit order and you specify the price that you're, you know, the highest price you're willing to pay. And if the stock is trading under that price and you're buying, you'll get filled below your limit order. And if the stock, if you're selling and the stock is trading above, you'll get filled above your limit order. But that limit order essentially is your, your worst case scenario in terms of your buyer, your sell, uh, where you want to get filled. Uh, and they won't fill you at a worse price when putting in a limit order. Market order, yeah, that 5% kind of slippage, I, I would be careful personally. It's not a huge, huge deal if you're buying a stock for the long term. But if you're trading off momentum stocks and momentum, it's it's pretty important to note that and to utilize that and, and utilize the limit order in that case. You can't use stop orders. You cannot use trailing stop orders. And then the time and force, uh, good for day, and then a GTC, good to cancel. Um, most of us probably know this, but for those who don't, a good to canceled means this will be canceled in 90 business days or it gets filled. So either it gets filled and you're in or you're out, sell or buy, or the order gets canceled in 90 business days after you place it and then you'll have to go and re-enter it if you wanna enter it. Uh, a good for day means that by the end of the day, order gets canceled and the next day you start fresh, you have no orders open uh, unless they got filled. If they got filled, they got filled and you're in or you're out. And they have their risks, which is kind of you know, what you, we, we talk about. And obviously, you know, pre-market and after hours trading comes with lower liquidity, right? There's less volume in terms of getting in or getting out, especially when the spreads are larger on less uh, volume heavy stocks, right? It could be small caps, could be lower float stocks that could have some big spreads in the after hours. Um, you have some more volatility off of news releases and stuff like that. Um, so that's some of the risks to downside. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below because this I think is actually really, really big news. And obviously, as we're speaking, you know, Robinhood stock is 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 liking the news. So uh, that said, I'm curious to see how this plays out over the coming days, weeks, and months. And if we keep seeing this heat up in terms of small caps, uh, this could be some wild action we could be seeing in pre-market, which I'm definitely here for. So let me know what your thoughts are. I'm happy to hear you guys in the comments below. I would still recommend a Weeble over a Robinhood for sure. 
But if you if you insist and you need to use Robinhood, this is at least a good thing. It's a good perk. Um, and you know, I'm glad that, that we're, we're, we're seeing this you know, for users who are using the platform or who you know, don't want to move over uh, because it's ultimately a, a better, you're, you're, you, have, you have more availability and now the, the playing field gets evened a bit um, if you can you know, act on pre-market and after hours. Now many times you may act on things out of emotions and you may make stupid decisions. That's not up to me, that's up to you ultimately and, and you handle your own emotions at the end of the day. Uh, but it makes for some nice action, and I'm definitely I'm not I'm not opposed to this news by any means. We'll leave any links and resources down below on the video if you guys are interested in checking that stuff out. Make sure you are subscribed if you guys have not done so already. We also stream a couple times per week for Power Hour, generally speaking. So um, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday for Power Hour, the last hour of trading, we usually go into live stream. So definitely check out our recent live stream or hop on the next one. Happy to have you guys. Like always, any comments? How about the algorithm? So to likes, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.